My name is Elaine Short. I've had Finnish Lapunts since 1996 and have shown them since then and I have bred a number of litters. I've visited Finland many times and I've imported three dogs from Finland. I've also been the secretary of the Finnish Lapunt Club for the last four years and was on the committee before that and we run shows for the members. I have nine Finnish Laplands. I have a puppy of eight months and an old one of 12 who's a Finnish import and came here under the pet passport scheme at the age of a year. I would describe the Finnish Lapland as a medium size breed fairly broad in body with a broad back. They should not be narrow, so they're not to be fat, obviously, but they are not skinny. They are long coated and the coat is exceedingly thick and that enables them to live out in Finland at minus 30. They have a double coat, which is a very short woolly undercoat and a longer top coat. They have a broad muzzle and broad skull and this curly tail and they are an exceedingly friendly dog which I think is very important. Very good temperament and very good family dogs. There's a quite a wide range of sizes within the breed standard so a small bitch could be around 44 centimetres and a larger dog could go up to 52 centimetres so there's quite a wide range there. They're not that heavy, about sort of 17 to 20 kilos. The colours range from black to almost a pale cream. They have what is known as tricolour which is the black, brown and white with the very classical Finnish Lappen markings which have these little coloured eyebrows over the eyes and a muzzle and a ruff with a different shading and a black body very often. They do come in brown and they come in these sable colours which are a mixture through the coat of a different shade so that the actual length of the hair has two colours on it and then the undercoat can be even a different colour. So there's a brown sable and there's black and white and brown and white. I find that the coat will act as an insulation in the same way as it's good for them to have that double coat in the cold. It also acts as a protection from the heat as well. It's a mistake to remove it. That doesn't do them any good at all. They like cold floors, so if they're in a home that's centrally heated, they'd prefer to be in a utility room or somewhere like that on a cold stone floor or tiled floor, not carpet. And lots of dogs actually prefer to go outside. I know one family whose dog refused to come in and sleep and he slept under a hedge winter and summer because he liked it better. They were originally used by the Sami tribe for herding reindeer and they lived with the people in close proximity with the families and the herds which they move for grazing and then at the end of winter they bring them in and obviously some are cold and the dogs are used to round them up and move them. They're dreadful for hunting things like squirrels and that and they go completely deaf on you and it doesn't matter, you can stand there, but they'll hunt it down, not necessarily to kill it, but they, you know, they're sort of mad for wildlife. They don't, some people have tried herding with them, and I think one lady's been successful and has done so with a bit of training, which she didn't feel was too onerous to teach the dog, but not many people have ever really used them in this country for that.
They are very friendly. They are very good as family dogs. They like children and they like to be with you. And I think the most upsetting thing for a Lapun is to be left alone. They're happy to accompany you in whatever you're doing. They're pretty good with other dogs. Some of the males are not as good with other entire males, but they have Lapun walks where people gather together in a big crowd of them and they've been fine outside all running together. And in Finland, when they had to work, if they couldn't get on, they wouldn't be kept. They would have to get rid of that dog. I have cats and I find that if the cat runs, it's the same thing as the squirrel, it will run after it, but it can be easily taught not to, and I don't think they dislike the cat. They're very affectionate. They will take as much stroking as you want to give, and it's a little aggravating at times with some of them. They can be noisy, I would not deny that and it does have to be controlled to a degree. But there's some outside now and you can't hear barking. I mean, they're not out there barking for the sake of it. They'll bark when they're stimulated to bark. And I think that, as I say, when they're young, you need to get on top of that to a degree. Most of them, even when left alone, once they get used to that, uh, will go and lie down quietly somewhere and perhaps if you leave them something to chew, they'll be happy. They need a fair amount of exercise, there is no doubt about that. And I think free running is important for them because that's where they can get rid of some of their excess energy. They do need, at the minimum, an hour a day, whether it's cold, raining or anything else. I mean, mine go out every single day, twice a day in the fields for a good run. And they're also out morning and evening in the garden as well. Lots of people have problems getting them back. I mean, they will come back. They don't disappear for the day, but they see something, there is no doubt they will chase it. And if you've got more than one, you've less control because they will egg each other on, of course. Yes, they're intelligent and they're easy. I think they're very easy to train and they're a very willing dog. That's one of the main things with training, I think, is whether you've got the dog's attention and whether they're willing to want to react with you to you know what you're trying to ask them to do. Many of them have passed the Gold Good Citizens test and lots of them do agility and lots of them do obedience. So I think, yes, they're very trainable. They are food orientated, but you always get some that are not so. I have one, she's not particularly interested in food, given as a tidbit for training purposes, it's better to have a squeaky toy or something. They do like toys, although they don't last long, I'm afraid. <laughs> they don't need grooming in the sense that you've got to get the brush and comb out every single day. But when you come to groom them, you could do it once a week unless they're actually molting. But you do need to go through the coat and that is what takes a little time because there's a lot of it and you've got to part it and go through it section by section from skin to end with a brush and comb. So that you know, can take a good hour. They don't really knot up. The most knotting is around the ears where there's soft coat. Depending on weather, they will molt once or twice a year. But when they're not molting, you haven't got hair absolutely everywhere all the time, all over the house or all over you. But when they molt, boy, do they molt. And you can spend a good deal of time getting it all out and putting it all in a bag. And you have a great big bag full of this coat and it can all happen in a matter of a day or so, suddenly it starts a little bit and you can see there's undercoat coming away and then you can just comb it through and it just comes out like yards and yards of this undercoat and you will find 
but obviously bitches when they've been in season will lose their coats or if they've had puppies then they look absolutely awful and you despair that they'll ever look the same again. The dogs don't molt for those reasons and they will often retain their coat but if we have strange weather where it's hot one minute cold the next I find that that can set them off to molt a little more often. But when they're growing a coat and they've got their coat then it really doesn't require any more than a brush through and sometimes when they molt it's actually easier to comb out as much as you can and give them a bath and I have what's known as a blaster which is a very strong hair dryer which they can get used to that and actually learn to love and that will also rid you of a lot of the coat but of course it's blowing around the room like a snowstorm so you wouldn't want to do it in your living room we have PRA in the breed and we test for that post retinal atrophy which is also known as night blindness which affects many many breeds there are varying forms of that Ours is PRCD1 at the moment. It's tested and we know now the status of all of the dogs because everybody is tested. So that's one of the things. The other health issue is hereditary cataract, which is actually higher in incidence than the PRA, but they cannot and have desperately tried to find the gene for that in Finland and have not yet succeeded because I think it's multifactorial and involves other things than the PRA which is a straightforward recessive gene. We do hip scoring. Most of the people that are members that breed I believe have all hip scored and eye tested We've had a couple of cases of epilepsy. It's quite rare in the breed and they have not been able to find a gene for that. There's research going on again in Finland and at the Animal Health Trust. My general advice is that I hope that they would not be considering buying a puppy and being out at work all day. I think that's one of my rules, really. Some people will sell them to people that are not there. I think it's unfair and I know that everybody has to earn a living but they have to either make provision for the dog by paying somebody perhaps to come in a couple of hours morning and afternoon. There have been people that have used dog crashes. I do think that you need to be there and I do think that you need to be fairly active and I do think you need to have a, a garden, a reasonable sized garden so that the dog can go out there and play because you can't be pounding the common and the streets, you know, constantly. They do need to be amused and so you do need to be able to spend time with them and you do need to socialise them and you do need to take them out because I think that they need to see varying situations at an early age or you do get a very slight timidity with them. I think most people that have researched them and looked into, yes, they're going to molt, yes, they do need exercise, and yes, they require time spent with them. Most people that have come into this breed absolutely adore them, and not long after acquiring their first one, one to second. There's many people have bought two, and that's common. Yeah, they can be difficult as puppies. They wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and get you up and down you come bleary-eyed. But they are wonderful as dogs and I really couldn't recommend them more highly. Mm -hmm.